And now for a change of pace, Deep Blue Sea. Now there's a movie that gets its signs right. gets its biology right. Physics? Yeah, that's another story. I mean, if we look at that scene just because it's there and I want to explain what the problem is, and there's a lot of physics problems in that movie. Um, if you throw something underwater and it's got the form of, well, a piece of wood, a plank essentially, and you throw it with the flat side forward, that thing, that piece of wood, would just stop immediately, almost immediately. It would not hit the um, glass with enough force to break it, not even remotely, especially not that glass which has been hardened and thickened to withstand the pressure of water at, I think, about a hundred meters deep or so. So that's that's just ridiculous. But biology. Biology in Deep Blue Sea is pretty good. They even go out of their way in the beginning to explain that sharks usually don't behave like they do in the movie because they wouldn't attack humans. Mako sharks don't usually attack humans. Uh, they can't be held in captivity, which is why the station is out in the ocean and so on. So they're pretty good about that. And then there's how they became intelligent. The interesting thing here is that this is not your usual Lego genetics stuff. Now, Lego genetics uh, means that scientists have their genes, they know what they do, and what they do works just the way they imagine it. This is ridiculous. In real genetics, there are unforeseen uh, things happening when you manipulate the genes of, it, of an animal. Because genes have more than one function and we usually don't know all the functions of a gene, so there will be unforeseen consequences in genetic engineering. You can work against it if you're really well versed in the genes of an animal or a plant for that matter. Then you can counteract this, but as a general rule you can't do it with absolute precision. Now what happens in Deep Blue Sea is that the sharks uh, get increased intelligence, but that was not the goal of the manipulation. What they're trying to do is to use the sharks to create an anti-Parkinson medicine. And for that they change the, uh, they change the shark's brain uh, growth brain size and so on, and as a side effect of that, their intelligence grows. And probably as a side effect of that, their aggression also grows. And their aggression is probably because they're held captive, because most of what the sharks do in this movie is to get out of captivity. This all is pretty interesting because it means, by logic, this movie works pretty well. Um, not by physics as we've seen, there are other problems but I won't get into that because the sharks are my focus now. And what the sharks then do is actually prove that uplifting is a bad idea. Uplifting is the idea to take animals and increase their intelligence and their technological abilities to about human capabilities in order to have Mm, well, the goals are different on this. In order to have 
you could say slaves in order to have companions help us it depends on how you handle this but the important part is you increase an animal's intelligence to about human level maybe a little less and deep blue sea is pretty good at showing us why that is a bad idea because as philosopher ludwig Wittgen, ludwig wittgenstein uh, german names while talking english are hard uh, once said even if a lion could speak we would not be able to understand him and that's because he argued lions are thinking so different from us that it would be impossible to express any thought we could understand when you're a lion or the other way around of course and so what happens is that the sharks are so alien that even when they uh, are as intelligent as us when they might be able to develop a form of communication they're aggressive because they're sharks and the nature of sharks is to eat prey to hunt um, and in this case with the uh, also the intention to get out and they can't reason with humans because they don't understand humans we don't understand sharks and so what happens is well destruction destruction death sinking stations or trying to sink stations and a whole movie of action and people dying and screaming and running away and swimming away so that all works very well and thus i give this uh Critter a stamp of approval in my first critter critique video in this uh, channel because the sharks are really well done they work they are logically consistent and in the end they're a real animal just made somewhat more intelligent without it reaching ridiculous levels in a way that is realistic because it was not the intent to make them intelligent nobody in their right minds would try to create a an intelligent shark but it was a side effect of medical research and that is very realistic a word on the sequel um, I only recently saw that there is a sequel to this movie I actually saw the trailer I think a week back and it does make sense to um, employ these sharks for the military once they are there I mean the military did try that with dolphins and if there were sharks they would probably try that again I haven't seen that sequel it, I've been told it's basically a retread of the first movie but yet yeah, it also would make sense because the military would just make the same mistakes as the scientists here and the sharks would just be impossible to um, deal with because again we don't understand them we don't know how they think we have to learn these things and while we learn these things results could get pretty ugly so as there is not much more to talk about with the sharks i will still i will still stay with deep blue sea a little bit longer because while the original film and the sequel do not have that much interesting stuff to talk about in the sense of biology and science and so on, the sequel they didn't make does. So next time I'll be talking about the ship concept from the sequel they never made.